Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today we have the continuation of our question paper discussion, Public Health Dentistry. So we are into the part 4 of the 6 series sessions. So today's uh, discussion topics are uh, health education and promotion, nutrition and oral health, school oral health program and fluorides. Uh, among these four, health education is very important and fluorides. Uh, school oral health programs and nutrition and oral health, uh, they are not very important but questions, uh, short notes and short essays used to come but these two are uh, fluorides and health education very frequently asked long essay question. So last three sessions hope you had watched it. Uh, it was about uh, the first uh, nine chapters those includes uh, it was regarding the epidemiology of peroneal disease renal caries oral cancer before we had uh, the first session it was about uh, the introduction to dentistry public health and dental public health water purification waste management and the second session a single chapter was taken it was general epidemiology now we are into the fourth session so we'll start with the first chapter of fourth session that is health education and promotion the most common question asked was uh, define dental health education then the principles uh, barriers and uh, add a note on audiovisual aids so definition uh, you must write the definition that is it is a process that informs motivates and helps people to adopt and maintain healthy practices and lifestyle which advocates the changes as needed to facilitate this goal and conducts the professional training and research the same end so better you choose uh, this definition by national conference on preventive medicine in usa uh, two or three other definitions are there, but this is well accepted one. So this is the most commonly asked uh, section of health education that is principles of health education. Uh, we have 13 principles. Uh, the first one is credibility. The information should be credible and we should create interest and it should be a participating that is the audience should be participating in the process and we should motivate the uh, participants and the level of understanding is important that is a comprehension we should talk or we should provide information at a level where the participants or where the people understand it then we have reinforcement uh, it is a principle which refers to the reputation needed in health education so we need to uh, give repetition uh, this can be done at regular intervals and this helps people to understand new ideas or practices in a better way so this is also known as the booster doses then learning by doing it is like a principle uh, which is based on the famous chinese proverb if i hear i forget if i see i remember if i do i know next uh, we have known to unknown so before the start of any health education uh, the health educator should find out how much the people already know then give the new knowledge so known to unknown so we are providing a new knowledge so we need to understand how much they already know and then provide new knowledge then uh, the setting an example that is the health educator should follow what he preaches he should set an example to other people and uh, if uh, suppose if we take an example if he uh, talks about uh, smoking cessation and the people find the health educator himself smokes after the program that is uh, completely against the ethics so he should set an example then good human relationship that is health educator should have good personal qualities and he should be very friendly with the people and he should be a kind and sympathetic uh, a person 
so the people will understand better because they tend to listen to people who feel very uh, friendly then regarding the feedback uh, we should always take feedback uh, if because uh, we will be knowing if any modifications is required so we can uh, do the modifications at the later part of the uh, our presentation or maybe the next program then soil seed sower is like uh, soil is uh, the people seed is the information so is a health educator so this is very commonly asked principles of health education you need to explain a little bit about each principle then health education methods we have three uh, parameters that is individual approach where the one-to-one -one, uh, approach uh, that is uh, just like uh, giving a, a counseling session uh, or uh, maybe a, uh, just like in a college setup uh, you can imagine how a uh, student is uh, giving demonstration a single student is giving a demonstration or getting information from the teacher uh, on a one-to-one -one basis so that is uh, very effective but the problem is its reach is very less because uh, we are uh, giving just for a one person so individual approach is not always acceptable but sometimes it is very helpful uh, for example like uh, counseling sessions whereas a group uh, approach is an effective way of educating the community uh, only thing is we need to find out the suitable media the first uh, and we are also the mass approach it is reaching very uh, big population but it's not very effective so we'll uh, look into the group health education method chalk and talk method that is the first one the lecture type it is uh, carefully prepared oral presentation uh, of facts and thoughts so usually uh, it should have uh, less than 30 people and the length should be 15 to 20 minutes but the problem with this talk and talk it is always a one-way communication learning is more of a passive in nature then we have a symposium a symposium is nothing but a series of speeches on a selected topic each speaker uh, present an aspect of a topic but there is no discussion between the speakers at the end uh, the audience may ask questions and panel discussion is a little different a panel of uh, four to eight members sit and discuss a topic in front of an audience uh, the panel members uh, discuss here okay in symposium there is no discussion between members panel discussion it is a discussion between the panel members at the end audience are allowed to ask question uh, whereas demonstration uh, it is uh, like the procedure is carried out step by step in front of an audience so it has uh, got a high motivational uh, value and the audience can then carry out the procedure themselves uh, uh, without the expert help then uh, we have workshops workshop it consists of a series of meetings uh, with emphasis on individual work with the help of a resource person so what is happening here is the total workshop is divided into small groups and each group will select a chairman and this individual work solve a part of the problem and then finally the total problem uh, whereas a flash mob or the older role play okay so this is like a situation is dramatized to make communication more effective uh, it is the more uh, newer version is a flash mob where we suddenly attract uh, audience attention by playing music and dancing in public place so people will be gathered to watch the performance at the end we provide uh, information conferences and seminars are like uh, annually uh, it is conducted uh, with a common theme and uh, it can be conducted by the associations, NGOs. Uh, group discussion is more like a 6 to 12 people and they sit in a circular fashion. There will be a group leader who initiates the subject, prevents uh, side conversation 
बट प्रॉब्लम इज द अनइक्वल पार्टिसिपेशन में आपका इफ पर्सन इज शाई एंड सम विल बी वेरी एक्टिव एंड डोमिनेटिंग सो दैट इज अबाउट ग्रुप हेल्थ एजुकेशन मेथड एंड मास मीडिया इज द थर्ड मेथड मास अप्रोच a very large number of people can be reached just like our social media uh, the whatsapp facebook instagram youtube twitter all our social media can reach millions uh, within seconds but it is obviously a one way communication so this was all uh, the older types of mass media television radio newspapers posters this is just taken from the textbook but we have a lots of newer ones just like uh, social media facebook whatsapp and instagram now we are into the barriers of communication there are four barriers one is psychological physiological environmental and cultural barriers psychological is nothing but the person is not able to uh, receive the information because of emotional problem uh, depression or neurosis uh, we can um, help the person with uh, special methods Uh, we can motivate we can do counseling uh, physiological barriers a patient has any problem with self expression hearing seeing understanding uh, we can uh, think of an alternative method depending upon the patient's barrier environmental barrier the location where we are providing health education where this problem of noise vision and congestion if anything that sort of uh we can uh correct it then cultural barriers like habits beliefs customs attitudes some culture some uh, uh religions might object some kind of information uh acceptance there is lots of problem with some religion and some cultures they are not very uh convenient uh, to be accepted i mean for to accept uh, health education uh then we have again uh, the fine health health education and propaganda uh, describe various methods of dental health education individual group and mass approach which already we seen and now the new term we got here is propaganda propaganda is nothing but a publicity campaign what the uh, people they do at uh, the parties the common uh, political parties what they do at election campaign that's what propaganda without any evidence they just put up uh, slogans they just put up some plans so that is propaganda and propaganda started in the uh, hitler period we has a propaganda chief joseph gibbles he started this uh, making up stories out of thin air so that was a uh, propaganda uh, so we have some difference between health education and propaganda health education knowledge skills are actively acquired but in propaganda knowledge is instilled in the mind of people health education uh, make people think for themselves propaganda prevent thinking by ready made slogans this is uh, discipline primitive desires but to stimulate primitive desire then health education is always calls to reason but this is to emotion and this is an active process and this is spoon fed the process is behavior center and this is process is information center this dif- this develop reflective behavior health education as propaganda develops uh, this is reflective behavior and this is reflexive be- behavior so propaganda is always a uh, very bad for people because they don't think they just accept whatever they hear uh next uh, is a question which came like this prepare a television talk for improving oral health for school children so you can apply the principles of health education and uh, the talk which uh, the content of talk uh, for aiming school health children so you can mention about the prevention of dental caries how to brush the brushing techniques how the dental caries happens and why you need to preserve the tooth till the exfoliation state and how many times you should brush and you need to uh, justify all your statement why you are saying uh, twice uh, brushing 
why you are saying using a toothbrush why you are saying using toothpaste you need to justify it you need to provide proper scientific information then only they will listen and you need to demonstrate uh, all the brushing techniques the phones technique or the modified mask technique so you can write under uh, the principles of health education and the content then uh, define health education describe the various methods of health communication so communication is basically three types a one way two way verbal non verbal formal and informal so one way is just like sender to receiver but the problem here is knowledge is imposed it is authoritative learning there is no feedback little audience participation whereas two way communication uh, there is always participation from both sender and receiver learning is active and democratic it is more likely to influence the behavior whereas the verbal and non verbal uh, verbal is a traditional and non verbal is a bodily movement and facial expression even when you are teaching something don't just stand at one place you need to uh, make gestures hand gestures your body should speak so formal communication is follow lines of authority informal means conversing with friends or colleagues short essays uh, we already seen audio visual aids uh, we know which is audio audio aids visual aids and the combination health promotion is a, a last uh, question which might come so it is nothing but helping the people so that uh, helping in a way so that the people uh, has more uh, knowledge about their health so that they understand their health better so that they maintain their health better uh, they stay away from diseases by adopting uh, newer uh, health promotion measures so these are the principles of health promotion like building a health e public policy uh, we should create supportive environment for a better health we should strengthen the community action to promote health uh, we should uh, help the people to develop better skills to have a good health and we should reorient the health services to the needy people next we have the chapter uh, which is not very important nutrition and health uh, nutrition health uh, basic questions are define nutrition and the importance of nutrition in oral health nutrition we know it is a process by which an individual takes in and utilizes the food that is what the patient consumes nutrition what is taken from the diet so nutrition and dental caries is uh, you know how it affects pre eruptive effects post eruptive nutrition and malocclusion periodontal disease and oral cancer so diet is what i said like food eaten by individual nutrition is what it consumed out of uh, diet so nutrition and pre eruptive effect there is always we know how it affects the uh, if we take the tooth Uh, vitamin A, vitamin B, calcium, phosphorus, all minerals and vitamin should be there for proper uh, maturation of pre-eruptive maturation. If it is not there, there will be uh, hypomineralized area. Similarly, post-eruptive, uh, we need to provide fluoride, calcium. So proper maturation requires ions, uh, minerals, nutrition. If proper nutrition is not there, proper bone growth will not happen. Proper the heart issues uh, means there will be chances of crowding periodontal disease also for gum health uh, for proper uh, nutrition uh, proper uh, gingival health we need uh, good nutrients vitamin c is very essential similarly all nutrients are very essential vitamin b complex so nutrition and oral cancer so there are some agents which prevent oral cancer so agent Uh, which causes oral cancer so you need to explain bit about all of this so one question was epidemiological studies on diet and dental caries so this is regarding diet and dental caries from these studies it has been proven that diet is a positive factor for dental caries so first one was wycombe study 1945 to 55 it was in sweden it started in 1938 uh, this was uh, Uh, evaluation period it is to determine whether carbohydrate affects the formation of cavities uh, it had seven distinct groups and given in different quantities uh, and finally they found out 
the carbohydrate is a causative thing for dental caries then the second study was hopefoot house study uh, in new south wales between 1947 to 62 the children followed a strict vegetarian diet which was low in sugar and dental caries experience was lower compared to the children of same age and socioeconomic background in new south wales because they were provided with a vegetarian diet with low sugar compared to the other children uh, two sugar study which was mainly on fructose xylitol uh, xylitol it was done by Sheenan and McKinnon in 1970 where xylitol uh, proven to be uh, caries inhibiting where the xylitol group showed very less cavity Trista Dagon has study it is a remote rocky island in South Atlantic island so these inhabitants were of European origin because of the volcanic eruption the islanders were evacuated to England between 61 to 63 so prior to 1940 their diet was very low in sugar but since 1940 the island store they started selling sugar and sugar containing food so uh, the results of survey show very caries, uh, low caries experience in 1937 but after that there is a deterioration in the dental health because from 1940 they started uh, selling sugar uh, next study was hereditary fructose intolerance is a rare hereditary disease caused by an inborn error of metabolism and uh, these patients do not possess uh, the uh, enzyme uh, which is required for the ingestion of uh, fructose or sucrose so they uh, experience very low caries and World War II study, it was done in Japan. There is a strict rationing of sugar during these war times, which led to the decline of DMFT. Okay. So the DMFT was very less in 1950 compared to the 1940. Then uh, short essay, again, nutrition, classification of nutri nutrients and role of trace elements. So trace elements are copper, copper ion, zinc, phosphorus, fluoride. So these are like formation of bone, teeth, coagulation of blood, contraction of muscle, milk production. It has got uh, many roles. Nutrition and dental caries we already discussed. pre eruptive effects, post eruptive effects. Then sugar substitute. They are artificial sweetness. They are basically two type nutritive and non-nutritive. Uh, Mechanism of action, this xylitol, uh, they reduces, they are actually polyalcohol, this bacteria cannot act on this bacteria, uh, I mean uh, this sugar. So they are more like caries resistant, they can uh, provide much reduction of caries because it reduces the addition of microorganisms to the teeth surface and also reduces their acid production potential and it has the ability to promote remineralization by increasing the salivary flow when used as chewing gums school oral health programs uh, short essays uh, commonly asked question is incremental dental care and uh, comprehensive dental care okay so before that one question was about the objectives of school dental health program so these are the objectives you know to help every school child to appreciate the importance of healthy mouth uh, and stimulate the development of resources to make dental care available to all children uh, increase the observance of dental health practices including personal care professional care proper diet oral habits so all listed are the objectives and the components of our school oral health program uh, there should be a good a community school relationship between uh, school and the community and they should conduct dental inspection frequently and there should be a, a dental health education camps after that they should perform programs like tooth brushing program fluoride mouth rinsing program fluoride tablet program school water and other nutrition programs then there is most important question 
incremental and comprehensive dental care incremental dental care and comprehensive dental care are two concept incremental one is providing uh, health care in an increment fashion that is periodic care uh, they are treated at the earliest time and uh, in a such a way that there is no accumulation we should treat the uh, patients in a step-by-step -step manner because uh, we are provided with less fund so we need to uh, treat uh, the group of people where it's the earliest stage disease are at the earliest stage uh, but the problem it is very time consuming and uh, restricted dentistry is uh, more time consuming on a piecemeal basis uh, because we are not uh, taking whole of the population in a single time there is a comprehensive we are providing all accumulated dental needs at the time of population the program we are uh, treating all the people and all their dental needs then we put the people on a maintenance care but in incremental we take just a part of this population or a part of the school if you are going in school we just take one class at a time then after some period we take the next class and provide the maintenance care for the previous leader similarly we complete the whole population or whole school but in comprehensive we do this entire thing in a single time and later on we provide the maintenance care so blanket referral is a concept it is like uh, all children it is to make sure that the student uh, is getting treatment so in this program all children are given referral cards to first they have to uh, the dental health nurse or the uh, dentist or whoever checks the student at uh, school uh, write down the dental problems of the student and that card has to uh, go to the home and then subsequently to the dentist so all has to sign it okay then after a period of time the class teacher can check for the referral card okay if the student has got signature from the parent and the dentist and he can uh, make sure that uh, all the students get the treatment if somebody is not get the signature means he has not taken the card to the dentist or the parent so we can uh, monitor those children and do the necessary action so this is a blanket referral concept so next is a theta program it is a acronym for teenage health education teaching assistant it is developed by national foundation for the prevention of oral disease uh, for the u.s department of health and welfare so it came twice and dental personnel train high school children and they train the elementary school children so first dentist comes to the school and they train high school children after that this high school children train the elementary or younger group goals uh, like to give knowledge and skill there should be a good rapport between these two groups of children and introduce them to career opportunities Whereas SHARP is a school health additional referral program. This is motivation through home visits. Started in Philadelphia. Our first motivation of parents to correct children through community resources. So district nurses are the main in charge. Okay, so these nurses visit uh, the houses and meet the parents and uh, motivate them. Okay, if, uh, motivate them regarding the health of their child if the parent is not at home they make the phone calls so always one-to-one -one interaction establish a better rapport between home and school and they'll be well aware about their uh, kids problem so there are other pro uh, programs regarding the school health uh, one is head start it is the u.s department of health and human services to assist the children of lower income then learning about your oral health it was started by American Dental Association in 1971. So it is more to like education of school children. Then Tattle Tooth is by Texas statewide preventive dentistry program. Uh, using dental hygienists, they uh, help the students to understand about the oral health, its problem and how to prevent it. Then ESCOV dental demonstration in Denmark. The Minnesota Health Department arranged demonstration and education programs in school. The North Carolina Statewide Preventive Dental Program using 
school water fluoridation and mouth rinse program so all are screw dental programs all were done at schools uh, whereas coming to the indian scenario first program was started in baroda in 1909 there was no actual program but it was uh, believed that the program was uh, in any kind started in uh, baroda city now the vadodara city previous vadodara now is baroda so we had uh, one program that is called gates bright smile bright future it was started by or it was conducted in india and implemented in india by indian dental association they take classes for students now we are into the most important chapter that is fluorides so so many essays uh, used to be asked from this chapter the uh, one essay is define defluoridation classify the methods of uh, defluoridation uh, so we have uh, lots of uh, technique uh, for defluoridation the most common one is nalgonda technique it was developed by national environmental engineering uh, institute in nagpur in 1974 by naval ketal and it was reported by bulsu in 1988 so this is more like a water purification process the steps are like flocculation sedimentation and filtration similarly there will be rapid mix for a period of 30 to 60 seconds flocculation for 10 to 15 minutes uh, then filtration and sedimentation so all these processes are also there in our water purification the so same steps we also follow but uh, the technique is different so there are other methods uh, uh, before that the salient features are there is no regeneration of media there is no handling of caustic soda and adaptable for domestic use it is simple little wastage of water no energy needed minimum mechanical and electrical equipment there are other methods uh, they are not usually asked but you must be knowing uh, they are ion exchange process or adsorption that is uh, uh, carbion uh, defluoron one uh, it uses sulfonated sawdust uh, mixed with two percentage alum solution defluoron two uh, it is sulfonated coal using aluminum solution and um, there are few other methods uh, like uh, domestic uh, defluoridation uh, using uh, the drumstick seeds uh, so many other uh, people use for defluoridation of water so most commonly this nalgonda technique will be asked so you need to draw a picture and write about it then second question is define water fluoridation discuss the different methods of water fluoridation how fluorides are added into the uh, water okay so it is not about the systemic water fluoridation methods that is the next essay question we'll come to that so this is asked about uh, the water fluoridation equipments basically so if you are very confused you can write both answers like water fluoridation equipments and water fluoridation i mean community water systemic water fluoridation methods so water fluoridation is defined as controlled adjustment of the concentration of fluoride in a community water supply to achieve a maximal carry separation that is one ppm so we have three equipments basically one is the saturator system where the four percentage saturated solution of sodium fluoride and uh, which is injected at the desired concentration of the water distribution source with the help of a pump uh, so dry feeder system it is uh, sodium fluoride or silica fluoride in the form of powder is introduced into a dissolving basin with the aid of an automatic mechanism to ensure the maintenance of correct supply uh, that is a dry feeder system whereas a solution feeder system where the volumetric pump uh, used in here so hydrofluorosilicic acid that has been added okay so that was about the uh, equipments for water fluoridation uh, now uh, we have the systemic water fluoridation commonly community water fluoridation uh, school water fluoridation so only in community water fluoridation we uh, add one ppm because it is 24 by 7 it is coming to our home uh, we tend to drink a lot of water uh, but in uh, salt milk and school water fluoridation 
uh, we provide 4 to 5 ppm because we tend to consume very less of salt, milk and school water fluoridation. I mean school water also the student tend to drink one or two glasses max. So we need to get a uh, net effect of 1 ppm so we provide more amount of ppm so that he gets a net effect of 1 ppm. So regarding the salt fluoridation it was uh, introduced by Westby in 1948 that is sodium fluoride or potassium fluoride it was in Switzerland and they started selling uh, since 1955. So it has got two process that how it is added to uh, or production of low data salt by batch processing or continuous processing. Uh, this uh, batch processing is nothing but fixed amount of fluoride compound. Uh, mostly it is sodium or potassium fluoride is added to the fixed amount of refined salt. Uh, whereas a continuous process uh, in large production of plants where continuous processing of salt is very common. The procedure is often to spray a dosed concentrated fluoride solution through a nozzle onto the salt which is passing through a conveyor belt. This is a continuous process. Okay. Whereas a milk fluoridation uh, is addition of measured quantity of fluoride to a bottle or packaged milk. It was introduced by Ziegler. Uh, it was a project of Swiss city uh, Winter Thur in 1953. Uh, whereas in 1971, Dr. Edgar Boro established a Boro Foundation. Okay, so in England, uh, so it was aimed to promote the use of milk, uh, which contains fluoride. So milk is also additional uh, nutritional uh, benefit for the kids. Okay, uh, fluoride tablets, drops, and lozenges. So this is also a systemic fluoridation. So we were talking about systemic fluoridation, which is consumed to uh, uh, like our systemic circulation, it will enter to blood. So if the patient's drinking water has less than 0.3 and the patient age is six to three years, uh, we need to provide an additional 0.25 gram. Okay. And three to six year, uh, we should provide 0.5 and 6 to 16 here we should provide 1 gram of milliliter fluoride uh, and it changes according to the level of uh, fluoride in the drinking water if the patient is already having more than 0.6 ppm we need not to add any amount of fluoride further uh, next question was define dental fluorosis and write about Dean's fluorosis index Dean's fluorosis index was put forward by 1934 Later, it was corrected in 1942. So, it has got uh, six scale, uh, ordinary scale, normal, questionable, very mild, mild, moderate and severe. So, you need to write about each uh, category. Uh, then, what is safely tolerated dose and certainly lethal dose for fluoride. So, this is also known as STD and CLD. So, safely tolerable dose is 8 to 16 milligram of fluoride per kilogram. Uh, and certainly lethal dose it is 30 to 64 this is one fourth std is one fourth of cld so acute dose is 5 gram so if you consume 5 gram uh, there will be death and acute and chronic toxicity differ acute means rapid excessive ingestion of fluoride there will be nausea vomiting cramps diarrhea increased salivation uh, chronic is like fluorosis dental and skeletal uh, that comes in for toxicity now we have the topical application so before we were seeing the systemic application now the topical application commonly we have Nutsen's technique Muller's technique and um, uh, brood ball solution Nutsen's technique uh, sodium fluoride 20 gram per 1 liter of water uh, it is uh, applied in a 4 minutes time for an age group of 3, 7, 11 and 13, uh, for a one week interval, we are applying 4 times in this age group. So total 16 times. So um, application is same, the procedure is same. We need to polish the teeth, upper and lower are isolated with the cotton rolls. Then apply it for 4 minutes. Why 4 minutes means? 4 minutes will be saturated and there will be chalking of phenomena. Muller solution is more like uh, twice a year. The sodium fluoride total 16 times we will be applying uh, one week interval in each year 3, 7, 11, 13 where this age group is important because 
and this age group there is eruption of new or permanent teeth okay uh, three uh, there is eruption of uh, not permanent teeth uh, newer teeth uh, deciduous molars seven means central incisor and molars then 11 and 13 canines premolars so all has to be protected for uh, i mean uh, recent erupted teeth has uh, lots of porosity it takes two to three years for to have a complete post eruptive mineralization so till that time this teeth has to be protected from the attack so newly erupted teeth should be given fluoride so molar solution will be applied twice a year preparation is 0.8 gram in 10 ml water this should be in a plastic container and freshly prepared in short notes the apf application so brood ball solution so 20 gram of sodium fluoride is dissolved in 1 liter of 0.1 m phosphoric acid then we add 50 percentage of hydrofluoro uh, fluoride acid then adjust the ph3 and fluoride concentration 1.23 so it can be used as gel when we adjust the ph 4 to 5 so similarly we need to apply it for four minutes it is basically a tray technique tray technique and paint on technique is paint on is we just apply just like painting tray technique means we have preformed trays we apply the material in trays and apply it on teeth so the mechanism option there will be an intermediate product known as dicalcium phosphate dihydrate and And there is no staining uh, in uh, staining is happen in with this one that is molar solution disadvantage is the sour and bitter taste okay then we have fluoride varnish uh, first done by schmidt in europe uh, fluoride varnish there is two types duraflate and fluoride protector this is 27000 ppm and this is around 7000 so what happens is when fluoride is applied there will be formation of uh, fluoroapatite and fluorox fluorohydroxy appetite so the procedure is same okay uh, choking of phenomena which comes with uh, sodium fluoride application when we sodium fluoride application happens at one point uh, the formation of calcium fluoride happens and this formation prevents further diffusion of sodium fluoride and there will be complete stoppage of uh, the diffusion of fluoride so that is known as choking off effect. This is happens in sodium fluoride. Next uh, short note is show leather survey or 22 city studies. This is a little confusing because we have one 21 city study also. Show leather survey, both are done by Trendley Estrain in 1931. It is to determine the extent and severity of mortal level. He surveyed in 22 cities, okay, of 10 states in USA, around 5, 8, 2, 4 children. And he found out high concentration of fluoride directly related to mottling. Uh, mottling is widespread in more than 3 ppm area and discrete pitting was seen in more than 4 ppm area. Mild, dull, chalky white in 2.5 to 3 ppm and there was no mottling at 1 ppm. This is shoulder the survey because uh, it, there was a lots of walking involved so it is not a shoulder. The. This is 22 city study whereas 21 city study same author Trendley HD. 21 cities of 4 states. This is 22 states of 10 states of USA. Around 7 to 5, 7 children. This is around 5, 8 to 4. So it was like the relationship of dental caries and fluoride, the inverse relationship. And I found out maximum caries reduction at 0.7 to 1.2 ppm. Now the mechanism of uh, fluoride in caries prevention. So the first one is increased enamel resistance, that is reduction in enamel solubility because of this fluoride appetite crystal formation, increased rate of post eruptive maturation, that is the deposition of fluoride into this hypomineralized area is promoted with the presence of fluoride. Remineralization of incipient lesion, white spot remineralization is possible. Then this inference with microorganism, they alter the pH or bacterial enzyme interference. Then modification of tooth morphology, the slightly uh, smaller tooth will be uh, formed and shallower fissure will be uh, formed with the help of fluoride. Now we have water fluoridation studies. You need to write just like this. Okay, You don't write in big, big paragraph. This is 
uh, well uh, enough to get uh, good marks okay so first one is the grand rapids muskegon in 1945 experimental city was grand rapid muskegon control city duration 615 evaluation happened in 1953 carries reduction 50 percentage newburgh kingston this is a experimental newburgh kingston control duration 10 years carries reduction 23.5 to 13.9 branford sarnia stratford Experimental Brantford, Sarnia Control City, whereas Stratford was a natural control, duration 17 years, carries reduction 55. Evanston Oak Park, Evanston Experimental City, Oak Park Control City, duration 14 years, carries reduction 49. Teal Columberg, Teal was experimental, Columberg Control, duration 13 years, carries reduction 58. If it was asked for a short note or short essay, this much information is pretty much enough okay you don't write in a big big paragraph just write this four or five points on each okay so that was all about uh, the uh, session four we discussed fluorides health education uh, nutrition and school oral health program where the fluoride is the most important one systemic fluoridation topical fluoridation fluoride toxicity and defluoridation will be asked and many many short notes like fluoridation studies caries prevention mechanism 21 city show leather survey chalking off uh, fluoride varnish uh, apf this uh, woodward solution uh, muller solution nutsense technique so many questions will be there so next session uh, we are having uh, chapters like uh, pit and fissure sealants a traumatic restorative treatment survey procedures planning and evaluation and dental entices okay so after that we'll be having one more session so by part six we'll be winding up question paper discussion of public health dentistry so these were uh, uh, very comprehensive uh, explanation of each question uh, if you don't get much time to prepare uh, notes and if you don't get enough time to study I think this much points will get you marks for passing the exam and I don't say that you will get very high marks but it is quite enough to get a 50 percentage or 55 to 60 percentage rest you need to prepare your own notes uh, you need to uh, refer the textbooks or the notes which is given by your teachers but this will be a rapid review uh, you can watch all these uh, videos one by one or as a single video i'll be uploading all six parts in a six uh, i mean single video uh, after all six uh, videos been uploaded so that will be just like a rapid revision because it includes almost 90 95 percentage of the question which has been asked for past seven to ten years so i'll come up with uh, part five in my next session thank you